Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming to Grace Lutheran tonight for our first Revive service. Let's give Revive a round of applause. First one. <laughs> We're hoping to try kind of a different mode of worship, one that's more contemplative, um, a little time to just have some rest in the evening before we settle into the end of the day. So I invite you to you know, center yourself in this space, let go of worries, anxieties about the week to come, just sort of do your best to return to this space as we go through um, the different music and prayer and rhythms we'll try this evening. So to begin, I think let's all just take a deep breath on our own time together and then we'll begin singing. So please rise for our opening song. The lyrics from Build Your Kingdom here call us to set our hearts ablaze with hope, to seek God's kingdom first and to lay down our lives for heaven's cause. These words are echoed in the Bible in Matthew 6, 33, which says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Refuse to waste our lives for 
grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire. Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden, where another died for me. There is another in the fire. For dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore And should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I won't bow to the things of this world And I know I will never be alone there is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding The power set me free There is a grave that holds nobody And now the power lives in me there is another in the fire. 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 I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between went still. I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls gave in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is Between all the things unseen and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. I know I will never be alone. There'll be another in the fire standing next to me. There'll be another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding, how good you've been to me? I'll count the joy come every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be.
nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. The valleys that I wander turn to mountains that I can climb. But you are with me, never leave me. And there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Cause it's all you'll ever need, all you'll ever need Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that gospel beat Cause it's all you'll ever need, all you'll ever need Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that gospel beat Cause it's all you'll ever need, all you'll ever need may be seated. Well, hello, everybody. I'm sure you guys all know me, but I'm Hannah. Um, I'm Emily and Kendall's um, daughter here. I grew up in Dawson. Now I live in Sioux Falls. Um, but I attend a church in Sioux Falls, and they do this king thing called Reveal Night every once a month. And I brought this idea up to my mom, and another person in the worship team also brought the idea up. So. Um, I'm just super excited for you guys to see the Holy Spirit move tonight. So, and I also got asked to speak, so here we go. Um, so what is a revival? A revival is a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit that ignites a passion for God and a hunger for more and more of his presence. And now what is God's purpose for his revival? It is return to God. Your relationship with the Lord is not all sunshines and rainbows. There will be times when you're in the darkest of valleys, and there will be times when you're the highest mountain peak. And I have been there, trust me. Times when I know the Lord's revival, times when I, need, I, I know I need the Lord's revival, is when sinning becomes a way of the world or a pattern of my daily life. Also, when I think of reading scripture and worship seems to be like a chore to me, or when I am not actively receiving the word of the Lord. Um, here we go. Romans 12 states, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Or in the message, it says, So here I am, and I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to the culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention to God. And I just love that verse. It is so, oh, it's so good. Um, but now just to get a little personal here. Now, how has God revived me? I think I could go on and on and on about all the things he has revived me, but that would take forever, and then I feel like I would be my dad, so we're just not gonna go there. <laughs> Sorry, Dad, love you, but I had to do that one. Um, but I do think of one thing that comes to mind, and that is um, throughout my life, I feel like I've struggled with not being good enough. Um, whether it be not good on the basketball court or volleyball court, in school, in college, and just everyday life, being with people and stuff. Um, but the Lord has taken all those feelings away because I am enough in his eyes. Through Christ, he tells me I am loved, I am strong, and I am enough in his eyes, just like he tells all you guys that. Through Christ, I am, and so are all of you, fearfully and wonderfully made, and that is all that matters. 
I recently learned how to crochet, which it took a little bit, but in doing that brings me peace. Sort of how Christ gives you peace and comfort. As I weave through the yarn, it makes me think of how Christ moves in and out and through all of our hearts. And he continues to do that each and every day through a revival. A revival is needed when people have strayed from the Lord. Now, the Lord will never stray from you. He is constantly moving, thinking, making ways for us that we could never imagine. Isaiah 41 states, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The Lord is never going to change, and he will never leave you. A revival stirs up a stronger feeling for the Lord and is a desire for more and more. Now, who wouldn't want that? It is like a spark that ignites in your souls. It is the Holy Spirit moving through you, creating a new heart. In Psalm 51.10, it says, Create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. It's time for a spiritual awakening where hearts are turned towards God and lives are transformed by his power. Revival isn't God coming to earth. He's already come, and his spirit alert dwells within us. Amen. Thanks, Hannah. That was a beautiful testimony. Um, this is a very non-Lutheran request, but I request, if you feel comfortable and so moved, if everyone could move up towards the front pews, um, we're going to enter into a time of prayer here, so maybe just a minute, a little piano music, Chris, and we can kind of transition up to the front pews, if you feel so called. You really don't have to if you don't want to. It's an invitation. <laughs> That was a beautiful transition. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> so, um, I've been asked to step up here today. If we haven't had the chance to meet yet, I'm Deacon Alex. I've been here at Grace Lutheran for about a month, and I'm so grateful to be in this space with each of you, getting to know all of you. Um, something I was asked to talk about tonight is prayer. Um, what is prayer? Why do we pray? What do we do with prayer? Um, and why sometimes does it feel awkward to just pray, you know? Um, sometimes in church we have these beautiful liturgies, they're called, or prayers that are very constructed with vows and, you know, art and all these words from <laughs> hundreds of years ago. Um, kind of sounds like the King James Bible, but really prayer is talking to God. It's a way to, as you would build a relationship with anyone, a friendship or any other kind of relationship with a parent or a loved one or just someone you know in your life, you build that relationship by talking to them. Um, so I want to invite us all tonight to think of prayer in kind of that most simple, basic term. Prayer is talking to God, and it can be imbued with reverence even in that simplicity. It doesn't always need to have so much form or be led by someone who is ordained or something like that. It can be this beautiful thing that God calls each of us to do in everyday ways. Um, I can't quote the scripture exactly, so don't tell my seminary professors, but <laughs> there's a verse somewhere in the Gospels that says, when you want to pray, go into your room and close the door and speak your prayers. Yeah, and it goes on into the Lord's Prayer. Um, but something I kind of believe about the Lord's Prayer we say every Sunday morning is it's a framework for thinking about what do we need you know that phrase in there, give us today our daily bread. 
It means what do we need for sustenance? What bread are we looking for for the strength to go into tomorrow? You know, thinking about the different struggles we have or the different things we have on our plate that can cause a lot of stress and anxiety and Jesus is inviting us. What is that daily bread you need? What is that sustenance you need to go and face tomorrow? Um, so I think let's just focus on that piece for this evening and I'll open us up in a prayer. That's what this time will be. And then if you feel moved, and again, we're not being very Lutheran here tonight, and that's okay. <laughs> but if you want to pray anything, if you want to, in this community setting, um, in that piece of the gospel, Jesus was saying, go and do this individualistically, you know, go into your room and pray for what you need. But prayer can also obviously be very communal. Um, if you want to pray something on your heart and have it received by this community who loves you and who encourages you, I invite you to speak it um, and just know that it's held and it's not judged and we're doing this all together. So again, I'll open a prayer. If you're moved to say anything, either in your heart or aloud, please do so. And then after some time, I'll close us in the prayer as well and we'll move on with the service. Sound good? Okay, let us pray. Dear Jesus, we come before you tonight trying out a new method of worship and carrying so many different things. We are thinking about what's happening this week. We might be thinking about homework assignments. <laughs> We might be wondering about a certain relationship we have or people in our lives. We might be frustrated about something. We ask you, God, to give us our daily bread. Give us the sustenance, the rich spiritual food that only you can provide, God. In God, uh, John's account of the gospel, you are depicted as saying, um, take and eat, eat my body. <laughs> and that's an image we um, need some space to fully understand. But what it means is, in part, take, let me be with you. Let me hold you as you go through these different things. So God, we pray for you tonight. We pray for daily bread, the strength we need, the sustenance we need for tomorrow. God, I pray for this community, this Grace Lutheran Church community, um, that everything that each of us need and everything we need in community, you could be supporting us as we search for those things. God, hear our prayers tonight. Jesus, we lift up all these prayers, said and unsaid this evening. Empower us as we move through this upcoming week, this new month of October already. 
And thank you for this time to simply be in your presence alongside one another, worshiping and listening to holy words. Amen. 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 